Good morning. Welcome to the Contemporary Service at John Knox. It's great to see everyone, and we're delighted to have our guests with us this morning. Buongiorno. <laughs> All right. Do you know that the name of Jesus is very powerful? It says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord. There is power in that name. Let's stand and sing at your name. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name. Because of who I am, who 
Thank you, praise team. It's nice to know that we are the Lord's and we can confess why we would believe we are the Lord's with the Apostles' Creed. It'll be on your screen. Let's confess it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May you be seated and welcome this morning. It's good to see everyone. It's interesting. We were only gone a week, and it feels like we've been gone a month. But I did enjoy the service last week and Courtney sharing the testimony and Habitat for Humanity. She's a wonderful speaker. Uh, so just a couple more announcements. Number one, uh, VBS is coming soon. And I just want to encourage you before you leave to uh, watch the counter out there. There are so many great things uh, that you can sign up to be a part of. There's another Habitat for Humanity build, a VBS build. We're going to have uh, our missionaries in from Haiti in a couple weeks. Thank you. Jamaica. I went to Haiti. Maybe that's why I was thinking of that. Uh, Jamaica. Uh, and also, <clears throat> we're going to have a pot bless uh, dinner for them on July the 10th. So we just have some informal time to be with them and share with them. Uh, now, if you look in your bulletin, we're at the prayers of the people. So let's have a time of silent prayer. Then I'll do some praying, and then we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer together. Let's go to the Lord. God, will you please hear our silent prayers that we have for people that we know and love? God, we thank you that it seems as if your world is opening back up and people are feeling more comfortable and it seems like to some degree, Lord, uh, our country and our medical teams and uh, all the people working in healthcare, we can uh, walk freely and talk to people and be able to have vaccines and to return to life as we knew it. We pray for all the people that are still suffering from covid uh, we pray for all people to know that you love them through this uh, pandemic. We lift up our country, Lord, and the leadership. We lift up our president and the Senate and the House. And, Lord, we just pray that as we look forward to celebrating July 4th and the freedom that this country was founded on, we pray that you would be with our leaders, give them your heart to Continue to help this country to be free, to proclaim the name of Jesus, to be able to speak what we believe, and to worship you, God. We lift up praises to you this morning that Berna King was back in worship after her long, long surgery and continued recovery. We do thank you, Lord, that Habitat for Humanity is working hard to work with people so they can have a home, take care of their families. We thank you for our church home and the building and the grounds and all that we do to come together to know you and to seek you and to be known by you. We still pray and lift up Aunt Margaret for healing. We lift up Gunner for his upcoming surgery this week. Continue to come against that infection that is Bob Wurstler is dealing with. And we hope 
sooner than later, Lord, we can have Chris Allen back in the sanctuary and she can get out of the house and feel comfortable. In our long-term prayer request, we continue to lift up Don Phelps and Nancy Tobin as she cares for her brother at home and Kathy's sister, Cindy Miller. Lord, there's also unspoken requests that you know about for people that are in our family and that are around the world. I lift up Ashley Coley to you, Lord, and I just pray that you would remove that brain cancer in the powerful name of Jesus. And we pray for all people that are grieving the loss of their loved ones or a spouse or a child or be with them, Lord, as we start our grief group here that we can help people go through a season of grief looking at you. Lord, we thank you for all of our blessings and our family. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're at our time now where we have our offertory, and uh, we're not passing the plate in this service. So if you have a physical offering you'd like to give today, on the way out, an usher will be there, and you can put that in the offering plate. So think about your offering to the Lord and the Lord's offering to you as we have this special music time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've given to us. Just like the farmers, they harvest their grains, we also harvest those gifts that you've given to us. And we then return those to you so that those seeds may be planted, so that your fields may grow and flourish and your word can spread. We ask you to bless these gifts, these tithes, and these offerings. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Invite all the children up that would like to come up at this time. Hello, Henry. Hi. Welcome, Dylan. How are you? It is so good to have you guys all up here. Mackenzie, since you're sitting right next to me, I'm going to put you on the spot, okay? Could you read what my bracelet says? Watch for God. Watch for God. Hmm. Well, I got this in my handy-dandy VBS starter kit. And it's going to remind me all week that I'm going to teach the kids to watch for God in everything that they do, to watch for how Jesus works in their lives and how Jesus works in other people's lives. And just keep your eyes open and be eyewitnesses. Can you guys do that for me? Yes. And I'm going to put in a, a ploy for VBS too. I am still looking for some volunteers that would like to work throughout the week, maybe take some groups around to each station or to run a station yourself if you would like to. It is an awesome, fun-filled week where you see the spirit leading the lives of the kids and you just see them have fun and learn more about Jesus. So if you'd like to volunteer, I'd love to have as many people as possible. It's a great week. And now guys, I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. Can you be eyewitnesses for me? Sure. Sure? Eyewitness. Do you know what an eyewitness is? Oh, well, I guess I better share with you. So it's really important to keep up with uh, what's going on in the world today, isn't it? To know what's going on at your school, in your community, in your country. And one of the best ways to do that is by watching the news. I love to watch the news sometimes, and other times I do not like to watch it at all. But you hear eyewitness accounts, so let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to be a reporter. Hello, it's Miss Betsy from the Channel 8 News, and I am here with Cole Davidson, and he's going to give you an eyewitness account of how his little league team, the Giants, won the city championship over the past week. And then he would tell you play-by-play play and everything that happened during the game so you guys would know more about what his game was and you would feel like you were there and you would know what it was about. Does that make sense? Well, back in the day when Jesus was around, there wasn't TV. But it was really important to have eyewitnesses then, too. And let me give you an example. John the Baptist actually baptized Jesus. And before he baptized Jesus, he didn't really know that he was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God. But during the baptism, he saw a dove, the Holy Spirit, come down and land on Jesus' shoulder. And John the Baptist saw this. He witnessed this and then went on and told other people that Jesus was the Son of God. So one day, Jesus was walking down the street and he told the people, he's like, look, look, there's the Son of God. That's the person that I told you about. And because he witnessed that Jesus was the Son of God, witnessed the Holy Spirit coming down and landing on Jesus, that other people were able to come to know Jesus as well. And I bet that's kind of how you guys got to know Jesus. Did somebody tell you about him? Maybe a pastor or your parents or your grandparents, maybe a Sunday school teacher. Who told you about Jesus, Dylan? So your parents, that's awesome. And they told you all about Jesus because you wanted to know. That's great, Dylan. Thank you for sharing. So what I want you guys to do for me, because obviously it's really, really important to have these eyewitness accounts, is watch for God. 
Watch for God working in your lives. Watch for God working in other people's lives. And then go tell anybody that will listen all about Jesus so you can share Jesus with other people. Deal? All right, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your son. Help us to be witnesses so that others will come to know your love as we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can come with me or go back to your parents.
Today's scripture reading is from 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 17. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brian. Brian didn't waste any time. He just got elected as a new elder today, and he's already serving. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. It's good to see everyone again this morning, and as I was sitting on the beach looking at the ocean, I was talking to my grandkids, and I said, Do you, can you believe that two-thirds of the whole world is covered with water? And to look out on the ocean, and as far as you can see, you can't see the end to think there's a whole world living underneath those waters, and that God made all those waters. And then have you ever been to the beach and dug up a little sand fiddler? Those little things that fiddle in the sand, you dig them up and you throw them on your grandkids and they scream. <laughs> it's good beach life. And you think, how can this little critter? And then, you know, here comes one of these birds, right? I, I don't know what they were, in the, and they just continually peck in the sand. I'm like, he's made birds that literally eat sand. I mean, you know, every bite they had to get some sand in their mouth. And I'm like, God is so unbelievable. There's a song out that says, help me not to lose my awe of you, God. And sometimes when we've been Christians for so long, I, mine's about 20 years, I, I like this song because it, it's a prayer that don't let me lose my awe of you, God, yeah, because there's so much to know about God. So today we have a guest testimony speakers, the Monona's and... Uh, well, you weren't here earlier, so Vince, their oldest son, was here, but Vincent Sr. and Mary Lou and their family is here today, and it's exciting. They're here, and I met the family about two months ago. Vince and his family are members of our church. Hey, Lucy, I didn't see you back there. There she is, uh, <clears throat> and we met Vincent Sr. and Mary Lou, and they were sharing with me their relationship with God. You know, I didn't beg them. I didn't twist their arm and say, tell me about you and God. We were just talking, and it was so evident that their love for God just kind of flowed out of them. And he shared, they shared a little bit of their testimony, and I said, oh, that's so good. I said, you got to come share this, because one of the big things that we continue to learn is how do we share our love and our joy with other people? Because we live in a culture that, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes doesn't want to hear about God or doesn't want to hear about Jesus, but God wants us to tell them so they can know God. It reminds me of what the psalmist said. You know, there's kind of the before knowing God and the after knowing God. The psalmist starts out and he says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? And for a lot of people, I think that when things happen to them and they're not good, they wonder if God is really real. But then the psalmist turns around at the end and he says, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. And so thinking about that and uh, thinking about how good the Lord has been to the Monona's, I wanted uh, to invite them up there from Tennessee. They drove all the way up here to share their testimonies and obviously be with their family. Uh, and it's a great testimony because we have a program that's coming forward, and it's called uh, Loving Others. Because loving others is telling them about Jesus. Because when they find Jesus, it'll be the greatest gift 
that we can ever give them. Amen? So, Vincent Sr., will you please come forward and share your great testimony? Sorry about the no rail again. And here's a little bit of water if you need some. Uh, we've been talking for a while about putting a rail in here because uh, it's more secure for some people to come up here with a rail. So maybe that will encourage us to get that done. I could have tried it, but I might have fallen, and that would ruin everything. That would ruin everything <laughs> for you and us. Where's Lucy? There you are. My grandchildren are here this morning, and... Uh, I loved them so much. If I had known how great grandchildren were, I would have had them first. <clears throat> I'm just going to say a quick prayer before I start my testimony. Father God, we just want to thank you for who you are and what you've done, and in my particular case, reaching out to me and saving me from my stupidity as an atheist and revealing yourself in a way I couldn't deny you. I praise you for that, and we will be eternally grateful. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to start my testimony at the beginning. Um, I was born into an Italian family. Uh, my grandmother, everybody treated her like a queen, deservedly so. And uh, my aunts and uncles and cousins, it was a, a loving family. When we got together, the room was filled with love, and it was great. And I was the first son and the first grandson, so I was kind of elevated a little bit. And that kind of turned me into uh, the person that I am. I've never suffered from um, an inferiority complex or uh, just always been satisfied with myself, even though um, I spent the first almost 50 years of my life as an atheist. But getting back to the family, uh, I believe that the most important thing is the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, and second, I believe, is family. Now, they have a thing, an ac acronym or an acrostic, whichever it is, J-O-Y. If you want to have joy, you put Jesus first, others second, and that would include family, and yourself last. And when I got saved, the Lord gave me uh, a joy and a peace that has been with me every moment. But getting back to the beginning, um, so even as a child, I didn't believe in God. And for a reason that a lot of people find an excuse not to believe in God, you look around the world, and I've been around a while, and it gets worse every year for some reason. And um, you see all the murder and death and violence and hatred and anger and all these terrible things going on. And you say to yourself, well, if there was a God, how could he allow this to happen? And that convinced me that there was no God, because if there was, he would have fixed it, because the world's a mess. So even as a child, less than 10 years old, eight or nine years old, I decided there was no God. And I lived my life. When I was 17, I met a 15-year-old, dark-haired, beautiful young lady, and uh, I fell in love with her. And four years later, we got married. We've been together um, 62 years. I had to wait four years to marry her. We've been married 58 years. And, uh, you know, I couldn't marry her when she was 15, so I had to wait the four years. <laughs> so anyway, my life kind of started when we got married. And it was a typical American story. Husband, wife, children, house, car. We were moving along the way most people do. And um, Jesus makes a lot of wonderful promises in the Bible. And there's only one that I know of that's a negative promise. He says in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble. Well, if you live long enough, sooner or later, you're going to have trouble. And our trouble started... Um, well, let me back up a moment. My entire life, I wanted to be a cop. I really wanted to be a superhero, but I didn't, I didn't have any superpowers. So I worked as a computer programmer for years, 
And then there was a recession. I lost my job. I went on unemployment. And when I was on unemployment, I realized that if I could survive on this paycheck, I could survive on a cop salary. So at 30 years old, I joined the police force. And prior to Jesus, those were the best four years of my life. But after four years of being a cop, I got hurt on the job. I was physically disabled and I wasn't able to continue, which threw me into, because I was so happy being a cop. I worked the four to 12 shift because that was where the most action was. And at 12 o'clock, I didn't want to turn my car in. I wanted to keep looking for crooks. But uh, that ended and I went into a severe depression. If I wasn't such a proud man, I probably would have sought uh, professional help with, with a depression that lasted one year and 10 months. And then one day I woke up and the depression was gone. Now I can only think that there were a lot of prayers being offered up for me and God answered their prayers and took me out of that depression. I went to work that day and my boss said, what's different about you? He could physically see I was no longer depressed. So I wasn't depressed. It was my wife's turn to get depressed, and she got depressed. She waited for me to come out of it so she could go into it. And so we were at a point in our lives where things just weren't all that great. And we decided uh, to try to find a solution to our unhappiness. Now, uh, the worst year of our life was 1984. Uh, so many things went wrong in that year. Um, you could put us in separate rooms and say, what was the worst year of your life? And we'd both tell you 1984. We had a business that we were doing and we loved it, but it didn't work out and we lost the business. Then we lost our house, which was 100% mortgaged so we could do the business. And then we had problems with our middle son and uh, that's a really sad story I'm not gonna go into, but our world was falling apart. We weren't getting along and she said to me, uh, I'm gonna leave you. Oh, I left out a part. We were robbed on Christmas Eve, so throw that into the, into the pile. They stole my gun that I loved, my handcuffs, um, everything you know that meant something to me, our cameras, we, I won't go into that either, no time. But at any rate, um, so we got to a point where she was ready to leave me. And she went into our walk-in closet, she reached up to get the suitcase, but she couldn't reach it. So I went over there and I grabbed the suitcase and I didn't stop to think that it was empty and I yanked it and it bopped the both of us in the head and we started laughing for some reason. And I don't know how we did it, but we ended up walking backwards, laughing, falling down on our backs on our bed, and then the laughing turned to crying. And that's when she said, God help me. And I'm laying there, Mr. Atheist, saying, yeah, well, that's not gonna happen. Well, it turns out it did happen. But before I continue on with my story, when I say I was an atheist, I want you to understand that I didn't doubt if God existed. I was absolutely, positively, completely, entirely, totally, utterly, wholly convinced that God did not exist. So she's saying, God help me. And we tried to solve our problem. We had no house, no business, no source of income really. Uh, so we decided to move to Florida and we did. Uh, and down in Florida, she met a born-again Christian. Let's hear it for the born-again Christians. <laughs> Who gave her a Bible, and she started reading it. And she'd go into our walk-in closet, sit down, and read it for hours. And then when she wasn't reading her Bible, she was picking on me. You've got to come to Jesus. You've got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, you know, five years this went on, trying to get me to be a Christian. And as I said, I was a devout atheist. So one day she said, trying to trick me, um, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. She would try to trick me by saying, if you read the Bible, then you could explain it to me. Working on my male pride, right? Oh, I'll explain it to you. So that didn't work. So one day after five years, I finally said, what can I do to get you off of my back? And she said, just say, God, I want to get to know you better. Happy days, I figured this is it. 
you know, I say it, nothing happens, we're done. So um, being a perfectionist and having a severe case of OCD, uh, if this Bible was crooked like that, I couldn't. Nope, can't do that. It's got to be straight. So I do everything to the best of my ability. So uh, we had three kids, and things are always chaotic. So I went into the bathroom. That's my place of seclusion. And we had this exhaust fan that would make so much noise it would drown out the world. So that was like my little inner chamber where I could go. And I filled up a hot tub of water and I got in and I relaxed. And then I started clearing my mind of all thoughts. So for one split second, I didn't say, God, if you exist, I didn't say, God, if you can hear me. For one split second, I talked to God as if he were right there and he could hear me. And I said her words, expecting nothing to happen. That's it. We're done. And her words, seven words that changed my life. God, I want to get to know you better. Nine. <laughs> and when I said that, instantly, there was this flash of light right in my face. Now, I don't know if you remember flash bulbs, but they used to go off and you'd be blinded when the flash bulb went off in your face. This blinding flash of light, brighter than the sun, went in my face right here, inches away from my face. It wasn't something that I imagined in my mind. It was right there. And then built into that flash of light, which I was in awe of because it was brighter than the sun and I didn't have to squint and I've never seen anything like that, which I believe was the glory of God. But in that flash of light was a vision of Jesus Christ, his long hair, his beard, what we've come to accept is what he looks like. So I get this vision of Jesus Christ still focusing on the light and then boom, a second flash of light right in my face and this one had a picture of the Holy Bible. And just so I would be clear, the words Holy Bible were right on the book. So not being a complete idiot, I put two and two together and I came up with, if you want to get to know God better, you read his word, you get to know Jesus, and that's the one and only way to have eternal life, to have peace, to have joy. Uh, what did we sing? You know. Uh, uh, because of what you've done, not because of what I've done. At any rate, uh, this vision was amazing. And I always said that if you're going to get me to believe in God, you've got to whack me over the back of the head with a two-by-four because I'm just not buying this whole thing. So I did get whacked with a yeah. flash of light. I threw a towel on. I went out to her, and I said, where's that book? And she thought I was going to burn it or throw it in the garbage. I couldn't wait to start reading it. And I says, where do I start? And she says, start in the Gospel of John. So I started reading John, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I got to John 5, 23. This was a life-changing verse for me because it said, He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So my thought was, you know, because... I'm me, I'm going to deal directly with God the Father. I'm going to bypass the middleman. I read that verse, I said, no, there's no bypassing Jesus. So I said to my wife, what do I do now? How do I become a Christian? I mean, that's how dumb I was. I was raised Catholic. I went through all the sacraments, never believing. I said what they wanted to hear, never believing any of it. So I, I said, how do I become a Christian? And she said, um, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and invite him into your heart and into your life. That's, it's as simple as that. So once again, back into the bathtub. And I'm clearing my mind, and I'm re I, I remember all the sins that I committed, knowing that there were sins I wasn't even aware of, you know, that I must have committed and didn't know they were sins. Um, and I also knew <clears throat> that if I promised God that I would never sin again, I don't think that's a promise I could keep so I said, Lord, forgive me of my sins, and I promise to try to not sin again. I'm doing a really good job of that, although I slip from time to time, mostly 99% of the time, I don't sin. Anyway, I said those words, figuring it's just a formality. You say it, so what? <clears throat> Here's the what. 
As soon as I said, Jesus, come into my heart, I had, I had this anger. You couldn't tell by looking at me or knowing me that I was an angry man, but deep down inside there was always this anger. It was a part of me that now, as a born-again Christian, the part of me that I have is peace and joy, not anger. But it, at that point in time, anger was something that was partly who I was. And when I said, come into my heart, I could literally feel the anger floating up out of my body, through the ceiling, disappearing into the universe. And I says, this is great. I'm never going to get angry again. Lasted three months. <clears throat> but that was a pretty good run. <laughs> and then as the anger left, a peace came upon me, the peace of God. And I'm telling you, it is. I have never spent one, since I got saved in that bathtub, I have never spent one second of my life where I was not aware of the peace of God. I've had moments where my heart was broken. I saw my father in a nursing home for the first time. I couldn't even talk to him. They said, oh, he won't recognize you. He had Alzheimer's. He won't recognize you. I walk in the door. He says, hi, hi Vin. And they're telling me he wouldn't recognize me. And I couldn't speak. I was so heartbroken. I went into his bathroom. I kneeled down at the sink. I'm asking God to take away this pain and enable me to talk to my dad. And he didn't do that. And, and a lot of times when you ask God for something and he doesn't do it, he's got a reason for that. You have to trust him. And even though I was heartbroken and crying, I still was in touch with that peace buried down there, but not gone. And I am so grateful to God for the way that he's gotten me through so many different things. I've had situations, I mean, I had COVID. At my age and my condition, I shouldn't have survived it. I was in intensive care for eight days. I should have died, but God wasn't done. Maybe he wanted me here. That's why I didn't die. <laughs> At any rate, um, when I was in the hospital, I and you should do this when you're going through things that you don't understand. You know, my, one of my favorite verses is Proverbs 3, uh, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Well, in that hospital, he directed my path because I said, God, I'm in here for a reason. I'm in intensive care. I got COVID-19. Uh, why? And he told me, and he put it on my heart. I'm going a little over. Is that okay? Um, he put it on my heart. I'm a television guy, a movie guy. I, I grew up on movies. If there's anybody on this planet who's seen more movies than me, I'd be surprised. And TV shows, I had all my favorite shows that I'd watch all the time. And he put it on my heart that there's a better way to spend your time than watching movies and television. And I'd read the paper every day and... Um, he also said not to bother with that. So when the, the, the message I got from him in the hospital was basically to put away things that aren't important and focus on things that are important. Since that time, I spend an hour a day reading the Bible, and if I miss a day, like today I might miss a day, I'll make it up by doing two hours the next day. And um, I don't miss TV or, or movies or anything anymore, even though they were a big part of my life. I'm spending more time with God, and, and that's just way better than, than anything else. So thank you for listening to my story. Oh, wait, I got one more part. Um, <clears throat> really quick, when I first got saved, God told me uh, to tell everybody about what happened to you. In fact, he said, write a book. And I guess I was intimidated by the idea of uh, writing a book. So I put it off year after year. I never really got around to it. And then one day, God spoke to me and he said, write a pamphlet because you can just get the essence of what you want to tell people. It doesn't have to be a big book. It could be a little pamphlet, as long as the necessities, the basics are in there. So I sat down and uh, Normally, for me to like write a three-quarter page letter, 
It would take me 45 minutes because I'd have to get it just right. I would rework the sentence. I'd say, oh, that word doesn't work. Let me try another word. And when I write, it takes me a long time to write. Three quarters of a page, 45 minutes. I sat down to do this booklet when God said do a booklet, and I couldn't keep up with the thoughts that were in my head. I'm a two-finger typist, but I'm pretty fast. And I couldn't write fast enough. God was just giving me all the words. I banged this thing out in two or three days. And then when I read it, I said, whoa, who wrote that? <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's everything I wanted to say is in here. So really quick, I went to Office Depot. I made a bunch of copies. Uh, we were from Kingsport, Tennessee. And guess where the copies are in Kingsport, Tennessee? I forgot them. So. I asked Pastor Mike, and he agreed at the first service. The same thing applies for the second service. This is available through email. It won't be a booklet, but when you get the email, you can read the whole story, everything that's in there. And I'll email it to Pastor Mike, and you can ask him you know, to forward it to you. And that's all I got. Thank you. Oh. Wasn't that awesome? Okay, well, we have uh, two songs on our agenda. We'll go over just a little bit today. It's perfectly fine. It was a great testimony. I could, I could listen to it over and over. Uh, so we're going to sing both songs, What the Lord Has Done in Me and One Thing Remains. Okay, can you stand and worship?
Amen. That was wonderful. Thank you. And thank you guys so much from driving all the way from Tennessee. It's been a great blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Kelly to go ahead and uh, take you guys out. And when you guys leave, if you'd like to give them a big John Knox thank you, that'd be great. If you guys will go ahead out with Kelly, that's awesome. And then I'll give you guys a benediction and the family's going too. That's great. Did you get it all, Lucy? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Wonderful. Well, may... Jesus' love be in your heart. May you know that God loves you, and God will never leave you, and God will never forsake you. Have a great Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen.